we moved on to natrium uh, in the cell salt series so this is the next one after calcium phosphate it's ruled by the wondrous sign aquarius the water bearer and it rules fluid metabolism it is the water balancer water distributioner ruled by the planet saturn and uranus it is relates to fixed air elementally and it is one of the key salts actually these days because everyone so, suffers from allergies of some kind and this is my go-to salt for anyone who really suffers hay fever or skin condition as a based um, salt so like anything diagnosis applies of course so see qualified practitioners who've done their homework and understand this kind of stuff because uh, some of these things to do with salts can seem a little bit easy to diagnose but then there can be some difficulties around it as well which we need to use our wits when it comes to diagnosis so seasoned practitioners are always good to visit now basically this salt quickly just from a chinese med point of view i use for wind cold or stomach chi deficiency particularly with the geographic coat the integrity of the coat on the tongue is seems to be peeled and geographic it's not really sticking together this salt can be indicated for and um, a, a tongue that has uh, can be numb and tingling with bubbles and particularly a watery kind of look to it water at the bubbles on both sides of the tongue so to speak this is indicated for uh, natrium myrrh which is one of the key salts because it makes up majority of the body alongside one of the salts that makes up uh, majority of the body's constitution like calcium phosphate also i use it for whey chi deficiency obviously for sneezing allergic reactions and the facial signs can be generally um, puffy cheeks large pores like blackheads or a spongy bloated appearance to the skin and people who are overweight can't distribute the water properly this salt is very much indicated for a, 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 the salt is indicated for head congestion cold congestion clear watery discharges like for example hay fever or when we're coming down with a wind cold attack the nose can't stop running clear discharge and we can't stop sneezing um, allergic reactions and hay fever when it comes down to this because everyone seems to be suffering from it is an immune system problem it's not a histamine one and it doesn't help that in every street corner they're spraying roundup and things like this all over the weeds everywhere you turn so i think most people are just reacting to chemicals as opposed to pol pollen but george w carey would clearly state that no one should be reacting to any environmental condition if they had enough of this salt so when you're deficient in this salt you will react to pollen it's just the natrium myrrh deficiency we're talking about so there can be sun sensitivity these people can be like vampires who are really deficient in this salt they don't like the sun the sun is not their friend so they feel tired when they're out in the sun they start sneezing out in the sun they can feel extremely tired out in the sun and their energy really doesn't pick up until once the sun so-called comes down uh, it's another one for cold sores an indication for um, too much too little saliva and too much the funny thing about this salt being the watered balancer and distributor is you can have a deficiency in fluid which this salts indicated for which will balance it out and it can balance out the excess of fluid as well so it's quite amazing how it can do its job like this in the body um, it's one of the key indications for depressants despondent moods depression things like this sleepiness uh, it's very much indicated for sunstroke dull and heavy hammering headaches it's extremely good for those kind of headaches where you feel like you got a wet towel hanging over your head and um, you just kind of want to close your eyes all the time 
uh, neuralgic pain behind the eyes. Lacrimation too is another water imbalance. So we, you know, when we walk out into the wind, people suffer from lacrimation from the cold air blowing on the eyes and then they can't stop weeping. Um, phlegm is another indicator for particularly when we can cough up a little bit, particularly when the phlegm tastes like salt, salty phlegm. It does happen for people. And um, also the firing and cracking of joints. This salt can be deeply indicated for people who rotate their knees, shoulders or ankles and they just can't stop clicking and cracking. Um, it's indicated for restlessness and twitching of the muscles, which is not always a MAGFOS deficiency. Sometimes this can be a natrium mer one as well, which is interesting. A lot of people tend to go to MAGFOS here, so this is when the diagnosis comes in. You need to look at the face. Like the face in this case can be, you know, spongy, bloated appearance. You know, a feeling of drowsiness in the morning people tend to get. They feel hung over every time they wake up, so to speak, without even drinking. They're just like tired and the body feels heavy and lethargic. Uh, there can be extreme cravings for salt. Because sometimes George W. Carey would say that the, the table salt we have is sometimes too coarse to enter our bloodstream. So it can't enter. So this is why this salt can be deeply indicated for as well. Um, it's an interesting fact when you get into his works in his biochemistry. But generally the body, the entire body lacks tone and vitality. So yes, this salt is very, very much deep needed. And on, on a psych level, it's more to do with deep grief. Uh, people who are really deficient in Nat Mer will be extremely antisocial and won't want to see anyone. They like uh, spending time on their own and really don't really want to socialize and they have issues around that. Um, so there can be certain uh, just feeling like they we need time alone. So this salt is... Um, more indicated, I would say another one for depression as well. And it's interesting because the salt also, or anything to do with Aquarius, right, from a, a astrological medical point of view, rules the calves, the skin, the venous circulation as well, the veins. Uh, I think this salt is... is, is on another level, on a deeper level, is indicated for this kind of venous circulation type problems, particularly circulation problems below the knees to the lower feet because we're dealing with the Aquarius astrological body correspondence which will be around skin, ankles, tibia, fibula, Achilles tendons. And... Um, the knees and shin bone. But it also has an affinity for the etheric body on a more esoteric level, which is when our etheric body is a little weak, our immune system becomes weak. And this is why we're going to react to our environment. And funnily enough, one of the key herbs indicated, I guess, for Aquarius is what they call astragalus. In, in, in Chinese medicine, this, this herb's called huang qi, right, which has a very strong raising function. And this raising function tonifies our spleen and our immune system. And it's a uh, very, very strong raising herb and it's ruled by Aquarius. So that's just a little nutshell on natrium myrrh. It's an extremely important salt and extremely beneficial to cultivating our health and we next time we will move into where am i up to next i think we're going to be up to moving into the uh ferrum foss terrain so stay tuned for that one thanks for listening <laughs>